Um, first, I have video B, and I'm going to start with active range of motion extension. So you're going to have them seated with their arm at their side and their hand off the end of the examining table. First, you're going to have them demonstrate the motion. And then you're going to put the fulcrum over the um, ulnar side joint line and then the stationary arm in the midline of the forearm and the motion arm over the midline of the fifth finger. And you're going to do it again. And normal range of motion for this one would be 75 to 85 degrees. And she's at 84, so that's within normal. And then next we're going to do ulnar deviation. So I'll you put your hand back in the same position. And this time you're going to demonstrate moving your pinky towards your wrist. And then you're going to put the fulcrum over the middle of the joint line. And then the stationary arm up the midline of the forearm. And the movement arm over the midline of the third finger. And then you're going to do it again. And this one would be, a normal would be 35 degrees. She's at about 38, so that's within normal range. And then for finger flexion and extension, um, you can have them demonstrate, so I'll just do with your pointer finger. So extend, flex. And then for flexion, you're gonna put the, like, circle spinny thing over the joint line and then have them flex and then she's at about 70 and then we're gonna for extension put it underneath then do it again or do extension and she's at almost exactly zero and for that one you would just compare bilaterally to the same finger on the other hand and next for passive range of motion, we'll do flexion. So I'll have you put your hand back in the same position. And then you're going to support at the forearm and then hold at the hand and then just bring it down. And this one should have a firm end feel due to tension of the dorsal radiocarpal ligaments and joint capsule. And then next we're going to do radial deviation. So we'll put it in the same position. And then um, this time, I'm going to bring the thumb towards the wrist. And this one should have a hard end feel due to the scaphoid striking the radiostylic process. And then we'll do um, second PIP flexion and extension. And then just support the hand and then bring into extension. Inflection. And this one you can compare bilaterally, and it should also have a firm end feel due to the tension of the supporting ligaments. And then we'll do manual muscle testing wrist extension. So you're going to put them in the same position. Support at the forearm, and then um, apply over pressure to the dorsal side of the hand. Push up against me. And she has five out of five strength because she was able to break my resistance. And then this one is testing the ECRL, ECRB, ECU, extensor digitorum, and extensor pollicis longus muscles. And then do manual muscle testing radial deviation. So I'll be bringing your chair around this side. And then turn your arm over this way. bend a little bit right there and then you're gonna support at the forearm apply over pressure on the fifth um, metatarsal side push up against my hand and she has five out of five strength again and this one is testing the ECU and FCU muscles next we'll do finger extension of PIP and DIP so this one I'm going to put them on this little thing with the finger you're testing over the slot. And then for um, PIP, I'm going to support here so that they can't use their wrist or their MCP joint. <coughs> and 
and then apply over pressure to the distal finger. And then you can do the same thing for DIP, and just move them down a little bit. And you want to support over the PIP joint as well. Push up against. And for both of these, she had five out of five strength and it'd be testing the sensor digitorum communis, um, interossei, and the lumbricals. Now we'll go into special tests. So we'll start with theirs. Stress tests of the wrist. So this one you have them seated on the edge of the table. And then you're gonna support at the forearm and then grasp their hand. For this one, you're gonna apply force that results in ulnar deviation. And if there's pain or increased laxity when compared bilaterally um, over the um, lateral joint line right here, then it would be um, a sprain of the RCL. Next, we'll do valgus stress test on the thumb. So for this one, you're just gonna support the wrist and the hand. And then you're gonna apply valgus force to the thumb, point it outwards. And if there's pain or increased laxity when compared bilaterally, then it would be positive for a sprain of the thumb UCL ligament. And then next we'll do longa bone compression. We'll just do it on the pointer finger again. And before you compress, you want to tap or flick the end of the finger. And if there's no symptoms elicited from that, then you can compress. And if there's pain, uh, elicited upon either of those in the phalanx or the metacarpals, then it would be positive for a fracture of either one of those. Next, we'll do a grind test. So for this one, um, you're going to support the forearm and the hand. You're going to bring the wrist into ulnar deviation and apply a grinding axial load to the wrist and for that one if there's pain or paresthesia um, above normal ranges on the um, ulnar side the like in the ulnar joint line right here then it's positive for a TFCC pathology next we're gonna do Phelan's test <coughs> so for this one you're just gonna support at the forearm and then apply uh, over pressure to flexion of the wrist and hold for one minute. Um, with this one, if there's increased pain or paresthesia along the median nerve distribution, then it's positive for median nerve compression or um, carpal tunnel syndrome. And then the last one we're gonna do is Allen's test. So for this one, you're gonna have them flip their hand over. You're gonna apply pressure over the radial and ulnar arteries and then you have them open and close their fist quickly a couple times and then you can stop and you're going to release one and observe the capillary refill and then release the other one and for either of these if there's um, the absence of or just decreased capillary refill then it's positive for um, Um, like an abnormal compression of either of the two arteries and then that's all of it.